Hi, I'm Assistant Professor Aditi Mathur, International Schools of Business Management, Suresh Khan Bihar University, Jaipur. And in today's video lecture, we'll be starting with a new concept that is cost of capital. So let us just see all the points which we will be covering in this video lecture. We'll be understanding the meaning of cost of capital. We will also discuss few of the definitions. We will understand the basic concept of cost of capital. We will also learn the factors which affect the cost of capital. We will understand the significance of cost of capital, how to measure cost of capital and cost of different sources of finance. So let us just start with understanding what do we mean by cost of capital? Before that, let us just understand what do we mean by cost. So in this chapter, cost is actually a percentage. It is that minimum rate of return. What is it? It is a minimum rate of return. Right? And this minimum rate of return is actually that rate, that rate which a firm must earn on its investments so that the market value of the company does not fall. Right? So what we are trying to calculate? We are trying to calculate that minimum rate of return which a company has to earn from the investments so that the market value of the firm does not fall. And this concept is actually one of the concepts which supports the wealth maximization approach. Right? Remember, we have discussed the wealth maximization in our introduction to financial management and even in the objectives of financial management. So one of the basic and a very important objective is maximization of shareholders' wealth. And for that, you should know the minimum rate beyond which you should earn so that your market value of the company does not fall. And it is possible only when the firm earns a return on a particular project financed by the equity shareholders firm at the rate which is at least equal to or more than that rate of return. That means if a company is having cost of capital as 15 percent right it should earn at least 15 percent or more right and then only company should accept this project because 15 percent is that minimum required rate a company must have so that the market value of the company does not fall. So you have to actually compare that other projects, their rate of return with your cost of capital and then evaluate which project is the best one. So let us just discuss two important definitions. A cutoff rate for the allocation of capital to investments of project, it is the rate of return on a project that will leave unchanged the market price of the stock. So what is James trying to say through his definition that the cost of capital is that rate of return on a project that will leave unchanged the market price of the stock. Stock means of your shares, right? So it is that minimum rate. So one of the other term for the cost of capital is the cutoff rate. According to John, the cost of capital is that rate of return the firm requires from investment in order to increase the value of the firm in the marketplaces. 
right? So the, both the definitions are really very important for us. In examination, many a times, a normal question comes that explain cost of capital and give, an exa um, give example and definition. So you have to write the definition. Please always write the person name who have given this definition and then write the definition in the proper format that is with the inverted commas. So we can say that the cost of capital of a firm is that minimum rate of return expected by its investor. It is weighted average cost of various sources of finance used by a firm. So now let us discuss the various sources of finance for the long term purpose which a company uses. Right. So we have equity share capital preference share capital we have long term loans we also have debentures over here and we have retained earnings so these six avenues are the different sources of finance which a company use and they become a part of your capital structure so we are trying to calculate that weighted average cost which is what which is that minimum rate of return which an investor is expecting from the investments which he is doing in the company this cost of capital is of also referred as cutoff rate target rate hurdle rate minimum rate of return and standard cost so if in the question a question comes to calculate the target cost then that means the question wants you to find out the cost of capital so you should know the different names through which even a cost of capital is known so now let us just discuss few of the basic concepts of cost of capital the first basic concept is that it is not a cash cost. That means it is not always the cost which the company has to pay in cash for the use of capital. In fact, the reflection of the expectations of investors of a firm. Right. So it is not that amount which a company have to pay. Like when I might be asking you that what is the cost of the mobile which you are having in your hand. So at that time, you will be telling me the amount which you have paid for that mobile phone. Right. And it will include the uh, delivery cost. It will include the you know different types of taxes associated with so the total amount which you have paid will be cost for you for that particular mobile phone but it is not that case when we say the cost of capital cost of capital is that rate which reflects the expectations of investors of the firm that means they are expecting that minimum return from that firm it is not a cash cost concept the another point is that it is minimum rate of return so the capital required to maintain the value of its equity share is what is this minimum rate of return which is your cost of capital so this rate this amount this percentage which you will be calculating by uh, doing the weighted average method is to be maintained right so that the value of the firm does not fall the cost of capital considers the risk premium so what is risk premium risk premium is that minimum amount of money by which the expected return on a risky assets must exceed the known return on a risk free assets 
in order to induce a individual to hold the risky assets rather than risk free assets it is positive if a person is risk aver so that means the cost of capital consider the element of risk premium and to sum up we can say that the cost of capital is equal to equilibrium rate of return demanded by the investors on the capital market for the securities at a given degree of risk so that means cost of capital is considering the concept of risk so the concept of cost of capital helps the finance manager in taking the decisions right so this helps him to understand that what are the minimum expected returns uh, which a particular investor is you know expecting and which projects to be accepted and which projects are to be rejected so that the overall value of the firms can be maximized right the financial leverage capital structure dividend policy working capital management financial decision appraisal of financial performances of top management are generally influenced by the cost of capital so this is why i'm telling you the cost of capital is very important because this cost this r this rate that minimum required rate of investment helps you out to take the decisions related to your financial leverage your capital structure your dividend policies your working capital management your other financial uh, decisions and even while you are appraising the financial performances right so it is one of a very basic tool which a finance manager and the top management of the organization needs to take important financial decisions so let us just now discuss the factors on which our cost of capital depends on the first is demand and supply of capital so the supply and demand of the money the funds the capital available in the market for the firm plays a very vital role to determine the cost of capital the another point is expected rate of inflation inflation plays a very vital role whenever we take any financial decision and that is why it also influences the cost of capital the third point is various risk involved every firm have risk and the total risk can further be divided into two part systematic and unsystematic and this total risk influence the cost of capital the fourth factor on which the cost of capital depend is the debt equity ratio of the firm so debt equity ratio plays a very vital role when we determine the cost of capital so now let us just discuss the significance of cost of capital the first very important significance is maximization of the value of firm for the purpose of maximization of the firm's value a firm tries to minimize the average cost of capital there should be a judicious mix of debt and equity in the capital structure of a firm so that the business does not bear undue financial risk so whenever we talk about the profits we say that the cost should be less and uh, the uh, selling price should be more right the basic definition of your profit is sp minus cp right so that means the profit depends on the cost the lower the cost higher will be the profit so the same concept 
to have the maximum value of the firm, you need to make sure that you have the minimum average cost of capital. And that will be possible when you have a proper sound capital structure. That means a good mix of debt and equity. Right. So when a company have a good mix of debt and equity at which you have the maximum EPS at that level, you will have the minimum cost of capital. The another significance is capital budgeting decisions. So proper estimation of cost of capital is important for firms in taking capital budgeting decisions. Generally, cost of capital is the discount rate used in evaluating the desirability of the investments project. In the internal rate of return method, the project will be accepted if, the, uh, if it has a rate of return greater than the cost of capital. So let me just first tell you what do we mean by capital budgeting. Capital budgeting is a process or it is a method through which you decide which project is to be accepted and which project is to be rejected. There are lots and lots of situations, the plans, the projects available in front of the finance manager in which he have to decide in which project to be selected and the investments must be made. So to select what to accept and what to not accept. The one of the method is NPV method and another one is IRR. So IRR, that is your internal rate of return. In this method, only the projects which have more return in comparison to the cost of capital, they are accepted because they will be giving you more return from what you were expecting. So that is how the cost of capital helps you out to take the capital budgeting decision. So now let us just take an example and let us just assume the cost of capital is 15% and IRR for project a, let us assume it's 10. For project B, it is 15. And for project C, it is 18%. So as per the uh, criteria of IRR method, that is internal rate of method, the project C will be accepted because it is earning more than the required rate, that is the cost of capital, right? So 18% is the return which you will be getting from the uh, project C, right? And it is more in comparison to your uh, minimum required rate, that is 15. So that is why you are not going to select project A. You are not going to select project B. You will be simply selecting project C. So for this comparison and for this evaluation, you need to know your R, that is your cost of capital, the minimum required rate of return. In calculation of your NPV that is your net present value of the expected future cash flows from a project, the cost of capital is used as the rate of discounting. So in your NPV method, the expected future cash flows of the project, the cost of capital is used at the rate of discounting. Right. So this R when we used to, you know, uh, dis do the discounting, this R is your cost of capital, which becomes your discounting factor. When we use NPV method, right? So that is why the cost of capital is also referred as your target rate, your minimum required rate, and even your cutoff rate. The third significance is decisions regarding leasing. 
estimations of the cost of capital is necessary in taking this uh, decisions related to the leasings of business concern the fourth significance is management of working capital in the management of working capital the cost of capital may be used to calculate the cost of carrying investments in receivables and to evaluate alternative policies regarding receivables it is also used in inventory management also so when we will do the lessons of your uh, working capital i'll tell you how the cost of capital is you know associated with the uh, management of working capital even in the dividend policies the cost of capital is significant factor in taking the dividend dividend decisions the dividend policies of a firm should be formulated according to the nature of the firm whether it is a growing firm normal firm or a declining firm however the nature of the firm is determined by comparing the irr and the cost of capital that is if r is less than k or r is equal to k or r is greater than a k it defines the indication of growth form normal form and declining form so that means if your irr is less than your cost of capital always remember beta that the cost of capital is denoted by k capital k right so that means that it is a growing firm if it is equal to that means it is a normal firm if it is less than k that means it is your declining form right so dividend policies depend on the nature of the firm and you can only determine the nature of the firm when you know the cost of capital and the internal rate of returns the another significance is determination of capital structure so the cost of capital influences the capital structure of firm in designing optimum capital structure that is proportion of debt and equity due importance is given to the overall of the weighted average cost of capital of firm the objective of the firm should be to choose such a mix of debt and equity so that the overall cost of the capital is minimized and that is why we say that the cost of capital becomes the basic of calculating the um, no capital structure because you will select that capital structure which have the minimum cost of capital and gives you the maximum eps the seventh point of the significance of the cost of capital is evaluation of financial performances the concept of the cost of capital can be used to evaluate the financial performances of top management this can be done by comparing the actual profitability of the investments project undertaken by the firm with the overall cost of the capital so how do we represent our overall cost of the capital the overall cost of the capital is denoted by r k or k o right so we are you know taking these decisions on the basis of the cost of capital but comparing it with the actual profitabilities which an individual investments from a project are and uh, you know received and we compare it and we decide that which project is to be accepted and which is to be rejected now let us just understand how do we calculate the cost of capital the cost of each component of a capital has its cost called specific cost of capital that means that the different sources of your firms finance that means your equity share capital preference share capital debentures long term loan your retain 
earnings. These all sources have its specific cost. Right? And we have to calculate the individual specific cost. And with the help of the weighted average cost of capital method, we calculate the overall cost of capital of the firm. So when we calculate the cost of equity, we denote it by just a second. So we denote it by capital K and small e. So whenever you see a capital K and a small e, that means it denotes that uh, it is the uh, ratio or it is the It is the cost of equity. For the cost of preference share, we denote it by KP. For cost of debt, we denote it by this K and D. And for the long term loans, we denote it by KL. And for the retained earnings, we denote it by KR. Right? And the overall cost of capital is denoted by K or KO. Right? So this is how we write our cost of capital. These are the abbreviations given to the different cost of capital. And with the help of the weighted average cost method, we calculate the different, uh, we calculate the overall cost of the capital. But to calculate this overall cost of the capital, that is KO, you need to learn how to calculate KE, KP, KD, KL, and KR. That means cost of equity share capital, cost of preference share capital, cost of debentures, cost of long-term loans, and cost of retained earnings. And all together, when you will use the weighted average formula, you will get the overall cost of the firm. So that is why we have to first learn the individual uh, cost of the specific source and then we can use a uh, format, a formula of the weighted average cost of method and then we can come up with our K or K. So this is how we write our different sources. Uh, I have missed to write the long term, so it is KL. And that's it. This is how we generally write our specific cost of capital. And generally, companies have only these sources uh, for the financing or to have a capital structure. Right. So in our another upcoming video lectures, in each video lecture, we'll be learning how to calculate the specific cost of finances from the different sources. And then later on in a separate video, we will learn how to calculate overall cost of capital with the help of VAC. That means weighted average cost of capital. So let us just have a quick recap of what we have understood today. So today we started with our new topic, a new chapter that is cost of capital. Cost of capital is that minimum rate of return which a firm must earn on its investment so that the market value of the company's equity share does not fall. Right. And this is supported by the one of the very important objectives of finance, that is wealth maximization. Then we see the two definitions. They are very important definitions. Then we understood that uh, we just looked on the different names of the cost of capital. The cost of capital is also referred as the cutoff rate, target rate, standard cost, rate of return, the minimum rate of return, etc. And it is calculated with the help of weighted average cost of method. Then we also understood the basic concept of cost of capital. And the first basic concept is that it is not a cash concept. Then it is a minimum rate of return. And it, we also understood that it takes into the consideration the risk premium. 
we also understood that how the cost of capital helps us in determining the different management decisions. Like the cost of capital becomes a base to take the decisions related to the financial leverage, capital structure, dividend policies, working capital management, financial decisions, and the appraisals of financial performance by the top management. And that is why we say that it becomes a basis for the decision making of a very important, uh, you know, decisions of a finance manager. We also understood the uh, factors which on which the cost of capital depends on. That is the demand and supply of the capital in the market, the expected rate of inflation, various risk involved and debt equity ratio of the firm. We understood the significance of the cost of capital. The first significance is the maximization of value of the firm. We try to minimize the cost so that we can maximize the value of the firm. We also uh, looked upon how the cost of capital helps in taking the capital budgeting decision. We discussed two cases, that is when we use IRR approach and NPV approach, that is your internal rate of return and NPV is your net present value method. Then we looked how it is uh, significant in taking the decisions of the uh, leasing, then how the management uses the cost of capital in the working capital management and the decisions related to the dividend, deci uh, uh, dividend de decisions. That And we also understood that what, who are or which companies are the growing firm, normal firm and declining firm. We also understood that the cost of capital, uh, you know, influences the capital structure and we like to choose that capital structure which have the minimum cost and have the maximum EBIT. So that mix of debt and equity should be selected whose overall cost of capital is minimum. And we also understood the different, uh, you know, evaluation of the financial performances. We looked on the specific cost of capitals, that means for the equity share capital, it is KE, preference share capital, it is KP, debentures, it is KD, long-term loans, it is KL, and for the retained earnings, it's KR. And the overall cost of capital or the total cost of capital is denoted by the capital K or KO. These are the different sources of finance your debentures, long-term preference, equity, retained earnings, and your external equities. So now let us just have a quick revision with the help of the MCQs. I have prepared 10 MCQ questions, and with the help of those, you will have a good understanding on the learning which we have made lecture. So let us just start solving the MCQs, and the first two questions on your screen. Question number three and four. Question number five and question number six.
question number seven and question number eight. Question number 9 and question number 10, last two questions of this video lecture. Now let's check your performance. These are the correct answer. For question number one, the correct option is option C. For question number two, it's D. Question three and four, the correct option is A. For question five, the correct option is option B. For question six and seven, the correct options were uh, option C. For question eight, the option is A. And option uh, question number nine and ten, the correct option is and please start preparing your notes time to time so that uh, at the end of the um, you know sessions you have your notes ready so you just have to brush up the concepts before you go to the examination i do hope you have understood what do we mean by the cost of capital what are the different names of the cost of capital how to calculate the cost of capital uh, what are the different definitions uh, needs significance and importance of the cost of capital how the different specific cost of capitals are denoted so that means for the equity share you write it ke preference share is kp debentures it is kd long-term loans it's kl uh, retained earning it is kr we will learn how to calculate each of these different sources in the different videos and that's all for today uh, thank you for watching this video lecture do hope you have a more better clarity in what do we mean by the cost of capital and what are the basic concepts associated with the cost of capital thank you and happy learning